Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health is recommending that Premier Doug Ford up the legal drinking age from 19 to 21 years of age while simultaneously recommending the province decriminalize hard drugs and make access to them easier. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini here once again pointing out the hypocrisy of the bureaucracy. You see Ontario's conflict of interest riddled Chief Medical Officer of Health Dr. Kieran Moore who once advised the Progressive Conservatives on vaccine mandates despite a declared conflict of interest with pharma oligarch Pfizer. I uh, have an honoraria from the Ontario College and I'm on the um, advisory board of Pfizer for their Lyme disease North American a strategy. Is now recommending the government look at increasing the legal drinking age from 19 to 21 at the same time that he recommends free supplies and opioids for drug addicts to somehow reduce the stigma. Premier of Ontario Doug Ford said he would not be entertaining an increase to the legal drinking age despite this recommendation. Uh, do we disagree? Yes, we, we disagree. I disagree with raging, uh, age, raising the age to 21. And one of my principles were, you know, these young young people, they put a, a uniform on and, and go fight for freedom around the world, uh, driving tra uh, tanks and heavy uh, military equipment, and again, putting their lives on the line for democracy, and they can't go back later and have a beer? That doesn't cut it. So uh, that was one of my uh, principles. And if they're, you know, if they're willing to fight for our country, they're, they should be able to have a beer. In his 2023 annual report published at the end of March, Dr. Moore acknowledged that his own COVID-19 policies, from devastating school closures, forced social isolation, psychologically damaging mask mandates, and the decimation of livelihoods through forced business closures, only exacerbated substance use and harms. Now, the province is seeing a rise in everything, from tobacco and vaping use, to cannabis, alcohol, and opioids. And in many cases, it's primarily affecting youth in grades 7 to 12. Moore says that the best antidote to problematic substance use and addiction is connection. Connection to family and friends, to community, and to society. Yet, once again, his very own COVID-19 policies deprived individuals of this crucial lifeline on a rolling basis for years, without evidence or justification. Moore's report further states that when thousands of people are dying from preventable overdoses each year in Ontario, the system must take urgent steps to keep people alive, such as creating safe spaces where people can use drugs and providing regulated pharmaceutical alternatives, i.e. safer supply of drugs. With these harm reduction responses in place, people who may use opioids may be in a better position to benefit from offers of education and treatment and to make choices that enable them to reduce or even stop their opioid use. Moore says that the aim of the alcohol strategy is to bring down the rising rates of alcohol use among youth and women by exploring whether to revisit the current minimum legal drinking age from 19 to 21. Yet on the opposite side, the opioid strategy aims to decriminalize simple possession of unregulated drugs for personal use. The aim of reducing stigma and providing non-judgmental services is something more says can be done by increasing access to supervised consumption sites, naloxone kits, providing needles and other drug paraphernalia, peer-led outreach supports and health services that include rapid access to addiction medicine, which is just a better way of saying safer prescribed opioids, and other investments like drug checking services so that street drugs can be analyzed before the addict consumes them. These programs are, of course, free, but built on the back of taxpayer funds. Interestingly, nowhere in the document is there an age limit mentioned when it pertains to access to harm reduction or this idea of safer supply. So Moore wants to put more regulation and controls on alcohol while decriminalizing and increasing access to hard drugs, presumably for all ages. This comes on the heels of the $1 billion federal liberal program geared toward reducing the harm of substance use on individuals, families, and communities that yielded no tangible results and instead coincided with a troubling increase in overdose deaths and only heightened drug use. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini.
The destruction of our cities at the hands of purported harm reduction and safe supply is happening at an alarming rate. If you would like to learn more about how the liberal implemented drug supply strategy is failing both from a statistical perspective, but also on the ground with increases in overdoses and deaths, crime and violence that follow, please visit our website at fixourcities.com. That's fixourcities.com.